So let's take a second example uh, of doing an argument diagram here. What I did is I asked ChatGPT to give me two independent reasons why Sam Altman's use of Scarlett Johansson's voice was unethical. Uh, in simplified terms, here's what it told me. It actually went on for quite some time about this, which is interesting, right? It, at the very Sam Altman is one of the uh, founders of ChatGPT of OpenAI. So, um, and I don't know if you don't know the background here, that's fine. The point is, uh, it gave me this argument or these two reasons for this conclusion. So. I've already established the conclusion at the outset as this. Sam Altman's use of Scarlett Johansson's voice was unethical. Uh, again, you can search the internet for context if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, so premise one is that it violates her autonomy and right to control how her likeness and voice are used. And premise two, it opens her brand to being associated with statements, products, or services she does not endorse, potentially damaging her reputation and brand. Notice these are independent of each other, right? We can claim that it violates her autonomy independently of uh, the potential damage to her brand. You might think of this as a kind of rights-based reason and this as a kind of consequentialist reason as to why using somebody's a voice without their consent would be unethical. So if we reconstruct this, then it looks, it's going to look like this. Got P1 and P2, and then a uh, conclusion, which I've of course labeled up above. Again, you can do this uh, pen and paper, upload um, pictures of that, both for the exam and for other things, you know, for the other assignments. But here, and then I just draw arrows, and because the premises are independent, each one gives its own reason that doesn't depend on the other reason to support the conclusion. So in this case, we have two independent premises supporting the conclusion. So we just reconstruct it like that. 